The definitive 2025 Guide to Home Charging Your EV takes you step by step through what you need to do once you've ordered your EV. If you follow this definitive guide, you'll learn everything you need from do I really need a charger? If so, which one? Through what cables will I need? Where can I get them? To which is the best tariff to save the most money when charging your EV? And how do I switch? I'm Dave, and this is Dave Takes It On. Well, good news, your EV is on its way. In days of stopping off at the petrol pump on the way home from work, they're a thing of the past. Your EV still needs topping up, but for most people, that now takes place at home. For many, they never charge anywhere else, ever. Each day they wake up to find their EV has a full battery ready to go. But getting to that stage takes a bit of planning and knowledge, so stick with us as we take you through the process, and if you like what you see, please subscribe. So do I need a charger? If so, which one? Well, the great news is that all EVs have a battery charger already built in, and the majority of manufacturers will provide you with the specialised cable to allow you to connect your new EV to a standard 13 amp 3 pin socket. Yeah, all EVs can be plugged into a standard kitchen or garage 13 amp socket. Nothing really could be that much simpler. Now, the reason some people do not use these to charge their EVs is that it's slow. These sockets in the average house, they're not designed to run flat out at 13 amps for many hours. So if you plug your EV into a 13 amp socket, your charge is gonna take less power to be kinder to your house. And it might take hours to fill it up, particularly if it's nearly empty. Luckily, most of us do not let the battery get empty. And if we top up each night, this can be done quite simply while you're asleep. This is the really simple way that most of us charge our EVs. Plug in each night when you get home and it will be full again by the time you wake up. If you thought that most people had to spend a thousand pound on a home charger, let's bust that myth right now. They don't. And this is the first of many myths that we're going to bust for you in this video. The majority of EV drivers charge at home overnight using a simple three pin plug that's supplied with the EV or purchased separately. They call it a granny charger because it's so slow. But it works for most EV drivers who charge at home. Well, the only extras you might need are if you don't get a granny charger free with the car or if you don't have a suitable socket to plug into. While you can run a cable through a downstairs window, it is decidedly unsafe to leave a window open all night, and your garage might not even have any power. In either of these cases, you will need an electrician to install a suitable exterior weatherproof socket. Or, if you don't get a free granny charger, you will need to buy one. They're readily available, and they cost generally around about £100-£150. I'll leave a link to a couple I've tested in the description down below. Why would anyone pay a £1,000 for a home charger when they already have one that was supplied with the car free? Well, the answer is speed and money saving. Let's start with speed. If you get back at night, you've driven 20 or 30 miles that day and you don't use your car until the next morning, most people will never need one. There's just no need for one. If you drive 200 miles on a weekend, yeah, most EVs can do this and more on a single charge. And you get back in the evening and you use your granny charger. The battery will not be full the next morning. It will have at least, I well, don't know, 70 or 80 miles range, but it won't be full. Now, if the next day is Sunday and the car's not really needed, just leave it plugged in and by the Monday morning, it will be full ready for work once again. Now, even if the next day is a Monday, a work day, you will still have 70 or 80 miles in it, and that's plenty for your 20 or 30 mile commute. You just don't need a home charger. But now imagine you drive 200 miles every day. Now, very few people actually do this, but let's be silly. If you did, the granny charger wouldn't cope. It would only have added about 70 or 80 miles by the next morning. Nowhere near enough for your 200 mile drive that day. So now you need something a bit more powerful. Well, exactly what, I'll have a look at in a minute, but let's look first, go back to the money-saving bit. 
Plugging in at home on a standard electricity tariff, you'll be paying no more than 27 pence per kilowatt hour. This is the price cap. You can plug in morning, noon and night for that price. And that's perfectly fine. It means that you'll be driving around an average EV for about seven pence a mile. And that's the equivalent to a petrol car doing about 70 miles per gallon. That's pretty staggering economy. Many petrol cars, by the way, don't do anything like that much in the real world. But many people want to save even more money and they found that all the electric utility companies offer you a really ridiculously cheap price overnight just for charging your new EV. Instead of 27p, they typically charge 7p. And that makes EV motoring insanely cheap if you can charge using this rate. But they only offer a very limited number of hours at this cheap rate, normally five, six or seven. Then everything goes back to the 27 pence, which is still pretty darn good, just not as good. I am going to cover tariffs in more detail for the moment. Just accept these exist and this next driver is going to switch to one. If they only do 20 or 30 mile a day, then once again, no problem. You can replace that mileage easily within the limited number of hours that you get and you're now driving round at a criminally insanely cheap price around two pence a mile that's the equivalent to a petrol car doing over 300 miles per gallon and yeah they've never existed and never will well the problem for some comes if they regularly drive 50 60 miles a day and more okay so who pays a thousand pound for a home charger well the quick answer is those that drive far in excess of 30 mile every single day and even then they don't have to driving even 60 miles average per day they can still use the granny charger in exactly the same way but if they switch to a cheap overnight tariff offering just five, six or seven hours of cheap charging and only want to charge during those cheap hours for maximum savings, they're going to need something faster. And for that, they will need a faster home charger. Once again, we're going to look at these in more detail shortly. Well, most drivers calculate that just switching tariffs is far cheaper, even if they only drive 20 or 30 miles a day and only charge for a few hours each night. Many who drive longer distance, like an average of 60 miles a day or more, calculate that installing a much more powerful home charger is usually financially worthwhile. So let's have a look at a few examples. Well, driver one drives anything up to around 60 miles a day every day. They've got a granny charger, they stick with that and they stay on the standard tariff. They're going to cover up to 20,000 miles at seven pence a mile. That would be a total of 1,400 pound a year. And the granny charger will cope perfectly well. That figure 1,400 is about half of what an average petrol car driver will spend doing the same mileage. Well, driver two, meanwhile, keeps the granny charger, but decides to switch their tariff to a cheap rate overnight. Still now driving up to 60 mile a day. Now, while the granny charger is too slow to charge it all within the six or seven hours offered at the cheaper rate, it might need 12 hours or more. They do get those seven hours at the cheaper rate and just the rest will be at the higher rate. Doing just that, driver two might end up paying about £900 a year and the granny charger will cope perfectly well. Well, that really is something for nothing. Switching tariffs is free and we cover that later. Well, finally, driver three drives those 60 miles or more per day, over 20,000 a year, but is greedy and wants even greater savings. Driver three might well pay the thousand pound. By the way, they could actually pay nothing. Uh, we've got a section on free home chargers uh, later on. But for now, once installed, these home chargers are four or five times more powerful. And now they can do all the home charging easily within the five, six or seven hours allocated. They charge exactly the same, but you just set the charger timer, and yeah, they all come with one of those, to charge only during those hours. They will always charge at the cheaper rate to give a cost per mile of about 2p. And that means that driver would only pay about £400 a year for all their motoring. Now that's a massive saving, over a £1,000 
So let's see how massive. Assuming they keep their EV four years and switch tariffs, then it'll work out cheaper to pay the £1,000 to install a much faster home charger then only ever charge at the cheapest rate and end up paying £400 a year for the electricity rather than the £1,400 or even the £900. They will save the price of the charger and installation in less than two years and then enjoy much lower prices for as long as they keep their EV. Now that really is a bargain, but even more so if they get a free home charger. See, very few people actually drive 20,000 miles a year, hence most people have just the granny charger. I'll just quick mention here, if you do drive in excess of two or 300 miles a day, you should automatically be on a home charger and switch tariffs. Well, by now you should know whether you need a home charger, that's dependent on your mileage, and whether you could save money by installing one. But you might not have to pay anything at all. You see, if you buy your new EV, then some already include a free home charger, supplied and installed. Others include a free home charger, but it's in the boot and you just need to get an electrician to install it. If you lease your EV, then most of them now offer totally free chargers, supplied and installed. If you decide to switch tariffs, once again, some utility companies offer a free or discounted home charger really is worth checking them out as if you have a choice of say two EVs that you like equally then a free supply and installation of a home charger could swing your decision. We list some of these free chargers at the end but be aware these come and go at a fast pace and an offer we highlight might not be available when your EV arrives. One final thought some new EVs even come with a year or two of totally free charging. If you can get one of these, do not do anything about your home charger for the first year or two. Drive around free, get used to charging. Only make that decision once your free period is coming to an end and you're going to have to start paying to charge. Well, looking into chargers, if you're happy to use the three pin plug charger, then make sure you have a suitable socket. You cannot, as we stated, leave your kitchen window open all night with a cable pushed through it. So the easiest method is just to have an external weatherproof socket installed. This will not only be for your EV, but you can always use it to power your lawn mowers, pressure washers and other garden related equipment. These must be installed by a qualified electrician and the electrician must be informed that you'll be using it to charge an EV. Your EV is an expensive bit of kit. Don't skimp a few pounds by getting a DIY installation. For portable chargers, if you want to use a three pin plug but you don't have a suitable charger included for free with your EV, these are readily available. We recently tested one from EV Dance and one from Ryden Tech. We found they both performed perfectly well and were supplied for the UK model with the UPIN 3 pin plug. They claim to provide a maximum of 3.6 kilowatts, but they should not be used at this high power for a continued period. Your home electricity supply is not designed for that. These generally default to 10 amp, which gives about 2.4 kilowatts. They start at around £150, and I have to say there's little to distinguish one as better than another. Cables are plenty long enough, and they offer full power adjustment. When it comes to home chargers, uh, assuming you've calculated that a home charge is beneficial, then there's a wide choice with a maximum power rating of 7.4 kilowatts. Now before ordering, check with your EV supplier and also your utility company. Some require specific compatibility to make the most of the available features. The first choice is tethered or untethered. In simple terms, does it have a cable permanently attached or do you need to bring a knee and use your own cable? In areas where you're concerned about crime or vandalism, choose untethered. You then just keep the cable in your EV, except when you're using it. If you're in a more uh, isolated location, your charge is hidden away a little bit, or crime's not an issue, a tethered cable is far more convenient. They all come with an app to control them and monitor what is happening. Top brands here are Zappi, Omi, Hypervolt and Evac, but some EV manufacturers do offer their own brand, like Tesla. Prices generally from around about £400 go up to nearly £1,000. Installation will likewise cost around £500. 
a fully supplied and installed EV 7.4 kilowatt home charger. It's widely advertised at around £1,000 all inclusive. Well, as stated, they all come with an app. Nearly all are internet connected. Now, while super duper internet features a great idea, in reality, some of the utility companies, like Octopus, we'll cover them in a minute, they actually just take over those tasks, bypassing the charger. The vast majority of people will end up very quickly just plugging in each evening and unplugging the next morning. So if the advanced features are free, yeah, by all means get them, but beware about paying extra for features that will either be bypassed or you're never going to use. Your chosen installer will advise and guide you through the process and in some older houses they will find that the existing electrical circuit or consumer unit will not meet current standards. These will need to be upgraded at cost. But if they don't meet current standards they, well, they should be updated anyhow even if you weren't getting a new EV. Now looking at utility company EV tariffs. There are only a limited number of utility companies that offer you electricity and all offer at least one specific EV tariff. The average price settles down about seven pence a kilowatt hour. And the average number of off-peak hours on offer is about six hours. This is normally more than sufficient to charge up most EVs completely at the cheapest rate. In reality, most are pretty similar, so if you're happy with your existing utility company, just ask them to switch you onto, the, your, onto their EV offering. Or you can complete the application online. In most cases, online they ask for details about your existing tariff, your smart meter to check it's compatible. Oh, by the way, if you don't have one, they're free of charge. You can apply for one during the switch. I, I personally needed to have a new smart meter installed when I first got my car. The process was really quick and easy. And uh, I was with EDF at the time. They put me on an interim lower tariff until it was installed and connected. Then it was able to work it properly and they switched me on to the smart meter. You can, of course, ring them up and check, change and switch. But to apply online, it helps to have your existing bills handy. So they will ask your annual usage. You can ask them to calculate it for you, but it'll be much more accurate if you know the exact usage. Enter into it all the details, your name, your address, your EV make, your charge, etc. And when you get your final on-screen quote, it will normally have a button at the bottom that simply says apply now or something similar. It really is as easy as that to switch to an EV tariff. Well, much the same, it applies if you wish to switch your utility company. Find the one you want to use, get your quote online, click apply. The process is largely fully automatic and they will generally switch you trouble free in around a week. Once all is installed, the only question then is how often to plug in and what state of charge to charge up to. Well, in general, check your EV handbook or ask your dealer and they'll tell you the recommended limit by the manufacturer. As a very rough guide, for LFP batteries, you can safely and happily charge to 100% each time. For NMC batteries, they generally recommend charging to 70 to 80% for normal day-to-day -day use and up to 90 or 100% for specific longer trips. All batteries can be charged to 100%, but being kinder to the battery will make sure it lasts a lot longer. It's not unique to EVs. Think of it like a petrol engine. If every time you leave the traffic light you use absolute full acceleration, then your clutch, engine and gearbox will wear faster and fail sooner than if you accelerate gently. Well, I hope that's been of help to you. If you have enjoyed this, please click the like button. And if you'd like to see more like this, please subscribe, click the notification bell, and then we can notify you every time we launch a video. As always, there are memberships available through Patreon and YouTube. So if you want to support the channel, then have a look at those and details for those are also down below. Thanks for watching. I'm Dave.